Hello, my name is Simon Powers. I'm the CEO and founder of AWA. And today we're going to talk around the role of an enterprise agile coach. This particular role has been uh, used in many, the, the word uh, enterprise coach has been used in many different ways to mean many different things. And I'm hoping that this video will clear up from an industry standard perspective of what is set to be an enterprise coach. So if we think about what the coach is, um, with this comes from the professional coaching world, meaning someone who is able to hold a coaching conversation. Now, usually that takes a lot of practice, a lot of learning, perhaps going on to some kind of uh, course to, to start you off in this direction. But at the end of that, you need to be able to hold a professional coaching conversation. The elements of a coaching conversation are around listening, being able to truly listen to the other person. There are elements around being empathic, being able to put yourself in the other person's shoes, dropping your own ego, letting go of the idea of the expert so that we are not putting our own ideas to the other person. There's plenty of times when we're coming as an expert, but as a professional coach isn't one of them. So having a really good understanding and experience and ability in being able to professionally coach is one of the prerequisites for being an enterprise agile coach. So if we now look at enterprise and we have a think about what is it that means the difference between a one-to-one -one coach, a team coach, a multi-team coach or an enterprise coach. So none, no coach is better than any other coach. That's the first thing. There is no levels. It's just a different scope inside the organization. And each level of scope requires a different set of skills and a different way of being to enable you to operate at that level. So if we have a look at the enterprise coach, we can see that there are elements of all of the other levels in it, which is why it's very hard to become an enterprise coach and remain effective because the level of learning both within the coaching side and within the knowledge of what it takes to run an enterprise is quite hard to get because you kind of have to do it to be able to have that experience and then the experience is what gives you the ability to do it and often because our organizations are structured in a sort of pyramid fashion there are a lot less enterprise coaches and a lot less opportunities at that level to really operate there if you don't have the experience. It's a lot easier to get into being a team coach and learn on the job. So this is one of the reasons why I'm giving this video to help people who want to or are aspiring to really guide entire organizations to being better places to work, more effective places, and ultimately be able to work in the world that we're living in now in complex adaptive environments, i.e. basically have agility. So we're going to dissect what it actually means to be an enterprise coach and what kind of skills that you're going to need and the experience that you need to gain to in order to operate at that level. And then at the end of this uh, video, we will have a look at how you can go about getting those skills if you haven't got them already, or even if you are working at that level, how you can improve upon those, not only within the skills acquisition, but also within your own development and also the experience, how do you gain that? So let's first have a look at the elements that make up an enterprise coach. I've categorized the um, elements of being an enterprise coach into five different parts. The, these are like macro um, categories, if you like, for the things that you need to learn. Now, these categories have come from nearly two years of work with a group of people who were gathered together by IC Agile, the leading certification authority within the world of agility, to look at their own experiences, this group's experience, to decide how we could describe the role in order to create a set of competences for the for the person to be truly effective so i was on that team and throughout those two years we looked at such a wide range of different things and condensed it into this uh, into this model 
and it's, I'm going to take you through this model. And the way that I take you through it's going to have a very much an AWA slant on it. So this is the way that I have experienced this, the way that my company has grown, how we've helped our clients, things we've gathered from the community, through all the consultants that we've worked with and how we've implemented this. So there's a huge range of knowledge and experience that has gone into this definition. So let's have a look at these five different elements. The first element is the uh, developing yourself, developing yourself as a leader. So it's important to understand that this is a leadership role. So developing yourself as leader is the first thing. The second one is the ability to guide the change process. So this isn't about knowing agile or knowing uh, frameworks or anything like that. This is about how human beings change. When change is put upon us based on our environment changing around us, different human beings, different people will react differently. And as an enterprise coach, we need to be able to help guide the process of change with lots and lots of different people at lots of different levels. The next and third element is coaching range. So we, we talked earlier around what an enterprise coach is uh, in terms of their coaching and what a professional coach is. And at an enterprise coach, we need to have a very deep range. And that means we need to be able to coach in different areas with different numbers of people to different levels of seniority. And we'll go deeper into that in a minute. The fourth area is developing leadership. So we've developed our own self, it's an ongoing process. We also need to be able to help develop leadership. And this means not only skilling people up in terms of their knowledge, but also helping them to develop their own character, changing the way that people behave so that they can create a culture of safety and a culture around them of the right behaviors so that we can succeed in business. And then the fifth part is guiding organizational agility. So this is really key. This is the thing that most people think an enterprise coach does, but it's fifth in the list for a reason. If you haven't got the other four things in place, then guiding organizational agility generally falls front. And most of the times that we enter a system, enter an organization, we see that this is generally what's been happening. People have been focusing on the external agility, the skills that people need, the processes that they follow and the tools that they're gonna use without considering all the other elements. However, you still need all those elements. You still need the organizational um, tooling. You need the, the processes and things like that, but they have to, to be derived from the other things. So you still need that expertise. And that's the fifth element. So now we will go deeper into each one of these to explore more about what each one means. Developing self as leader. So self-development is an absolute crucial cornerstone of being an enterprise coach. The reason for this is because the society in which we've been born into, and this doesn't matter whether you come from the East, the West, the Middle East, whether you come from China, South America, North America, Europe, Africa, it doesn't matter where you come from. The way that we've been brought up is to be experts. It's to guide us on a, uh, an individual journey of schooling so that we learn how to survive on our own. We enter the workplace as individuals and we enter the workplace with all sorts of historical backgrounds of biases. We have all sorts of cultural biases. We have biases which, uh, which, hinder us and help us in terms of our relationships with others and the organizations that we, that we belong to. We also need self-development because the world is continually changing. And even if we were somehow to be wave a magic wand and we became perfect, the world changes around us. So we need to continually adapt and develop. So developing self of leader isn't just a one-off process. It's a continual reformation of our own self character, our own self abilities, and our ability to look at oneself and actually improve not only our skills, our external skills, but our internal abilities to work with others and ourselves. So 
let's have a look at what those things might be. So if we take the external skills, first of all, that's the easy part. This is going on training classes. This is getting experience at the job. It's reading, watching uh, information from the internet. And it's, uh, it's about learning, getting new certificates, those kind of things. It's all around like building up our external skills and knowledge. The internal uh, learning and development is a little bit harder, especially for those of us in the West who have not had or have not been brought up in a culture which is um, readily available to be able to look inside and to ask questions about who we are and how we behave. And our workplaces are also not geared up. It's okay if you haven't got the skill to do a job, you go on a course and you learn it, and that's kind of normally expected. But if you haven't got the right attitude, if you haven't got the ability to be quiet when you need others to, when, when others should be speaking, those kind of things, we don't have the programs for those and they're generally not tolerated. But if you don't have those skills, you can't progress. So accepting that we're not perfect, accepting that we have flaws that we need to develop, that is one of the first steps. And in organisations where failure or weakness is not tolerated or accepted, this can be very, very hard to do. But it's essential if we're going to be able to grow ourselves to be the people that need to lead companies in this new age. So having a program of self-development, both for external and internal, is an absolute prerequisite for being an enterprise coach. And that means developing your own program of external learning and also a daily practice around how you can behave and how you are behaving and whether that is effective for you with the goals that you have. So having that in place is um, it is an absolute prerequisite. Now, some examples of things internally are things like coaching. So if you're a coach, it's generally good practice to be coached. And so having a coach yourself is pretty essential. So if we look at the different leaders in organizations, the really effective leaders with fantastic companies, the organizations which have grown and been very strong, normally those leaders, we can see, have coaches. So people are professionally coached. So getting a coach yourself is really essential. Now, luckily in the agile industry, there are lots of people who are aspiring to be good coaches and who would love the chance to practice. So you can, even if you can't afford an expensive, experienced leadership coach, there are plenty of opportunity for you to be coached with uh, some very, very good practicing coaches. Having supervision, is another real key benefit. So coaches in other industries, for example, people who are coaching people with trauma, people with ch other challenges in their life other than work issues, generally, and pretty much industry standard, is to have a supervised coaching session or being supervised whilst you coach. And that gives you that confidentiality to be able to talk to a confidential person about what's going on with your confidential sessions. And that gives you that ability uh, to, to be, not only be able to grow, but also let off the steam a little bit, let the, let the valve, pressure valve go. Because being an enterprise coach can be a lonely and hard job because by definition, we're out there at the front leading. We, by definition, we know a bit more about how an organization can improve than those people around us. And that can be a lonely and difficult place to be, especially if we feel that we need to push or coerce or uh, sell to leadership or anyone else our ideas because those things won't work. And developing self as a leader enables us to find a neutral space when we're coaching. It, it enables us to let go of our own ego. Nobody wants to be told how to do their job or that you know better than them. We have to let go of all of that. And developing self as a leader, leader is creating a certain humbleness, a certain neutrality, and a certain ability to listen and encourage others to grow into the space themselves to grow their own organizations. And you can't do that if you haven't had a hard look at yourself to see what you're really doing there and what your own aims and your own agenda is. So having a model for that is absolutely key. So developing self of leader is a program of ongoing development both internally and externally, so that you can continue to adapt and continue to be the best person that you can be. 
So we'll move on to the next section, which is guiding the change process. Guiding the change process is what it says, it's guiding. It does not mean pushing, forcing, telling or selling. It does not mean taking a enterprise leveled process, for example, a scaling framework and installing that into an organization. That is not guiding the process, that is telling the process. And we've known from many, many data points now that that is not an effective way to manage enterprise organizational change. Instead, what we're looking for is a coaching conversation with the entire organization. And if we go back to see what that means from a personal one-to-one -one coach, typically there are different types of coaching. When we come into coaching range, we'll dig more into that. But for now, all I'm going to say is that it is a coaching conversation like a one-to-one -one, where we're taking the person through their aims, their goals, we're diverging out, and then we're converging back to some action points and some a way forwards. A organizational enterprise coach guides the whole organization with a large conversation. It's a coaching conversation, which may last many, many years. And so having a coaching conversation mapped out is absolutely essential when you start. Otherwise it's kind of ad hoc. It's kind of like just making it up as we go along. And that is, it may work, but it's not a guaranteed move to success. And with an enterprise coach, what we're looking for is a predefined coaching conversation, which is going to allow us to guide in a completely non-deterministic way. If that makes any sense. We've got a structure from a coaching perspective, but the content is completely non-determinate, determined. And that's how coaching works. And that's what we need for our organization. Context is everything. So thinking as a coach that we would understand an entire organization's context is completely crazy. It's ne never, you just can't imagine that, that would be true. So we have to be able to coach an organization, not tell or consult. So in the slide that you're seeing now, this is the AWA playbook. The AWA playbook is a coaching conversation for an organization. And we will, um, on our classes and on the enterprise cohort, we take you through this conversation and with each element of it, you understand deeply how a coaching conversation works. So as an enterprise coach, you need to have a coaching conversation. So either create one yourself or you can learn from the AWA playbook, which is organizational coaching conversation. And there are different elements of this conversation for different levels and different places for when you first engage to when it's, um, an iterative process working through to when we're starting to make actions and changes and we're starting to wrap up and hand over the expertise and the coaching conversation to others. So this whole playbook is a non-deterministic way of reaching the organization's goals by adjusting behaviors so that the, the, the staff and leaders can adjust their own behaviors towards their own goals. So guiding the change process, as I mentioned before, is about human beings, people, staff, changing and adapting to change in general. So it's not guiding the process as in the external process, it's guiding the internal process of how people deal with and adapt to change. So if you're in an organization where people are saying, oh my goodness, not another change program, is it just another fad? Is it just another thing going on? It's because people have got fatigue from constant change. And that comes around from a lack of understanding around what change really is, because change is forever and constant and is never going away. So if we don't understand people's relationship to change, then they're going to burn out or they're going to get fed up and they're going to resist any more ad adaption. So what we need to do is build change into the very fabric of people's work in a completely non-stressful and sustainable way. And so guiding the change process is understanding human beings, not just on a one-to-one -one and not just on a team dynamic, but how do hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of people manage change? So having that kind of scope of changes is, is the next key.
from a very individual and a people perspective at a large scale. So the third element is coaching range. So we've talked quite a lot about coaching and now we're going to go even deeper because it's an enterprise agile or enterprise coach, enterprise agile coach, or enterprise coach. And it's that coaching word, which is, makes all the difference. So on the screen now, you can see a new model, which is an AWA model, which has been created by looking at the different elements of coaching and mapping this in to a typical organizational structure. So if we look over here onto the right hand side, we can see that we have these stances. So these stances have been borrowed from the uh, X-Wing diagram, but we've enhanced them to add in leadership because this is a really key stance which is missing from the team competency framework and a leadership stance needs to, um, to cover, uh, from the enterprise perspective, we need to have a, add the leadership in. So that fantastic work that's been done, we've built upon that. So thank you to the, uh, the, uh, Michael and Lisa who created that original framework. So if we look at uh, this, um, these competencies in the middle, then we can start to map this into the organizational layer. So we have the team layer, delivery teams, managers, leaders. Now also this applies to um, areas outside of IT. So the reason I say that is because Agile itself came from the IT world. So many of you who are watching this may not have come from the IT world and wonder why I even bother to mention that. But often IT can be the focus of Agile. And from an enterprise perspective, that couldn't be less true. HR, leadership, legal, finance, all of the different areas that the sales teams, marketing, all these different areas of the business must be synced in to the customer for customer advantage. We must have a customer centric focus. And that means aligning the entire organization out of these different silos into a delivery system which can deliver our products and services to customers effectively. And so each team, each part of the organization and each part of the hierarchy needs a different type of engagement. They're different types of people generally and they have different experiences, different needs, different types of problems. And so from a coaching range perspective, an enterprise coach might not be able to coach everybody, but they need to have an understanding of what it takes to coach everybody so that they can get the right people together at the different levels of the organization to ensure that the organization moves and adjusts as well. And so in this model, we've simplified this to leaders, managers, and delivery teams. Now, the different types of coaching, one-to-one -one coaching, team coaching, and systemic coaching, these are different skill sets. A one-to-one -one coach typically builds a very strong relationship with that individual. Team coaching builds very strong relationships with the team that you're coaching. You know their names. You know, probably know a bit about their families, about what's going on, about their individual dynamics which are happening between them and their teammates. When we start moving to team of teams, you're still using mostly team level coaching. So a lot of team coaches who then become experienced enough to team coach up to say 50 people, 100 people, looking at multiple teams, that's still team level coaching. And enterprise coaching takes it one step further to look at an entire system. And that's the systemic coaching. Now systemic coaching is a completely different art form and there's a lot of facilitation as well as coaching and where you probably won't get to know their names. You won't get to know all the details about people, but you can still very effectively coach them into a better organization and a better relationships and better output, better work and better outcomes. So these different levels and different types of coachings create a kind of matrix and learning each one of those elements, at least about them so that you know who to put in there is absolutely key. Now, if we go down the coaching stance, we can see that there are actually different types of coaching. There's skills coaching, goals coaching, gestalt coaching, and existential coaching. 
All four of these are required, but you personally as an enterprise coach may not need to coach all of them. So let's, let's start with the existential coaching. So existential coaching really asks the question, why? What are we doing this for? What's the point of it? And this gives an organization its purpose. So many organizations mistake their entities for vehicles to make money. Now, from a shareholder or stock trader perspective, that might be true. But the only way that you make money is by understanding what your purpose is, what your why is. That's what motivates your staff. It's what motivates your customers. As Simon Sinek says, we do, pe we do business with people who have the same why as us, has the same purpose. And so existential coaching is getting that right because everything else hangs from that. Gestalt coaching is a way of holding people in the moment. We're exploring the space that we're in now. And by doing that en masse, it gives us our best chance of systemic coaching. Without Gestalt coaching, we wouldn't be able to systemically coach. And so systemically coaching allows us to build shared visions. It allows us to move forwards together rather than in lots of fragmented parts. It allows us to move away from centralized control and create something where decision-making is made at the point of work and yet we still have cohesion. Goals coaching is where we're looking forwards to something in the future and we want to organize our behaviors around our best chance of succeeding with our own goals. Typically, one-to-one -one team coaching fits into this space. And then capability coaching. How do I get better at programming? How do I get better at being a leader? How do I get better at doing the skills that I've got to do every day? This is skills-based coaching. And together, these four give us the purpose, our ability to explore the best ways to create strategy to achieve that strategy from a goals perspective and our capability from a skills perspective. All of these different types of coachings need to be explored and embedded into the approach for organizational change. This is coaching range. So not being a professional coach, not understanding professional coaching and thinking that just knowing about agile is not going to cut it. We've got to be able to understand and experience and be able to professionally coach to be an enterprise coach. So the fourth element is developing leadership. So leaders set the tone for the organization. If we have leaders who believe in certain things, the organization will follow that belief. Leaders behave according to their beliefs. And so a mixture of these different elements of beliefs, of skills, of the way that people see others, the way that they handle relationships, sets the entire tone for the decision-making structure for the organization. And the decision-making structure creates the processes. And those processes are how people operate. Everything is based around the way their leader shows up and their skill set. If you change the leadership, you change the company. And so if we want a better company, if we want a company to do something different, it's absolutely essential that the leadership does something different. Otherwise, you're going to get the same stuff. Now, often when we're called into organizations, the leadership expects others to change. And whilst that is part of it, the leadership also has to examine the way that they behave with each other, the way that they see the work, and the way that they behave and treat others in the organization. Now, often these are subtle things. We talk about this difference between command and control and self-organization and all these kind of things. Well, normally in an organization, there's a bit of command and control, a bit of self-organization, a bit of relaxation, a bit of different types of delegation. It's all kind of in the mix, but it's getting the right mix. And that means developing our leadership at all levels of the organization so that people can create the right behaviors, the right environment, the right psychological safety to succeed with whatever you're doing. So there isn't a set program of how psychologically safe or of how your um, decision making should be. It's all relevant to your context and what you're trying to achieve. So understanding what that is, what your goals are, what your outcomes are at a senior management level all the way down 
is essential to knowing how to organize your business because you only need to organize your business enough to achieve the outcomes that you need. So developing leadership to understand what business outcomes that they require, what behaviors they need to achieve those business outcomes, how do they encourage that behavior throughout the organization and create a program development for leaders to achieve the outcomes that the business needs at all levels is a key skill of an enterprise coach. And for that, we need to have developed our own leadership skills, which is why we do that first. And then we help develop others. So this is a really key part. You need, which also means that as an enterprise coach, you need access to the leaders. How on earth could you change an organization or help an organization to develop if you don't have access to senior leadership? So at AWA, we will never do any work unless we have access to those senior leaders, it, because what's the point? You've got to be able to work with senior leadership to change that behavior so that the organization can change. And that's an essential prerequisite for an enterprise coach is being able to work with leadership. Now, you may be one of those leaders. You may be a board director who's watching this, in which case you will need to develop yourself and help those around you to develop themselves to understand what the real business challenges are from an outcome perspective and help reorganize your organization the outcome from a customer perspective that's the challenge and that's what being developing leadership means and there are lots of different ways to develop leadership i'm sure anyone with a large organization has been through many leadership development programs things from 360s to the myers-briggs to all sorts of these things these are great tools but they're just the beginning we need to be able to use coaching mentoring facilitation alignment all of these different elements through different workshops to allow leadership to develop specifically in that context to allow the business to succeed so now we'll move on to the last step which is guiding organization agility so this is where the actual agile knowledge comes in. So anyone who's worked at a senior level will know that agile, we don't really care about agile. No one cares about agile. What we care about is effective outcomes. And it just so happens that the tools which started off in IT and software, a lot of those ways of thinking about how to deal with the unpredictable world of software with the non-predictive um, problems that we face, the ever increasing complexity that we face in the uh, software industry, in the chemical industry, in manufacturing, in automotive industry, in the healthcare industries, we've got ever increasing complexity, but ever decreasing time to market. Customers expect things now and ever more complex. How do we manage this incredible complexity with shorter time to market? and with ever number growing, so never growing numbers of staff. So this is where organizational agility, the actual knowledge of how to structure an organization, how to create agile processes which are reflective so that we can grow and they adapt as our challenges of the organization adapt. It's this scope of the organizational scope of agility that is needed for the enterprise coach. So team level stuff like Scrum, um, Kanban, uh, and and that, that, those kind of things are, are absolute essential building blocks. And we need to build further than that. And I'm not talking about less or safe or any of those things. I'm talking about guiding an organization to design its own processes based on things you can take from those frameworks because they're all fantastic ideas that have gone into all of these things. But we need to go past that beginner level identity with these frameworks and take the best of those, take the knowledge from these things and design something specifically and contextually with the people who are going to be doing that framework. It's no good being an organizational agility expert and telling other people how to behave. That's never gonna fly. No one wants to be told how to do their job. What we can do is we can use all of that expertise, all of that knowledge that we've gained, all of that organizational structure, cultural, all of that kind of um, theory of constraints, the way the teams work, our lean knowledge, all of those things. And we can help the organization, we can guide the organization through experimentation to create the right processes for the context that they're in, to the right level. And that's what it takes at an organizational level, to guide an organization with all of that knowledge. So that creates the fifth element of this uh, body of knowledge for an enterprise coach. 
So I said that at the end of this talk, um, we would have a look at how you go about getting that expertise. How do you break into this space? So if you are a leader, if you are already in that organizational space, then you're already there, but you've still got to gain that knowledge. If you're a team coach or team of teams coach, you want to get into the enterprise space, it's harder to get that expertise. So we need to have a think about who we're going to engage with. How do we show up to get that space? And that, again, is about self-development. It's about connections and relationships. So at AWA, we have designed a program. This particular program takes us through with the guidance of the IC Agile Learning Objectives, which we help create and adapt and, and, and um, finalize into competencies for the expert framework. It takes you through, through two classes. The two classes are the ICP CAT and the ICP END. These two classes, which are coaching, agility, and the enterprise um, uh, masterclass, they give you the knowledge. And we've, what we've done is you can either take these classes as individual classes, or you can take them as a boot camp over a week. The primary objective of this is knowledge acquisition. So it's learning about the different elements through these five different topics. It's learning these different elements of what you need to be an enterprise coach or a leader in an organization who's working perhaps permanently in the organization to be able to guide your organization to a place where you're more effective, where the organization is more effective. So either two separate classes or the bootcamp. So we also at AWA have taken it upon ourselves to really try to create an internal shift inside these classes as well with all participants. It's not just about knowledge acquisition, it's about growing yourself. It's about having those aha moments and realizing that you yourself cause a lot of the problems which you're actually seeing in the external world. And that is the most powerful thing in my opinion that you can take out of some of these out of these classes some of these uh, learning things are, are you know it's all about the self but the primary purpose is the knowledge acquisition so combined internal external skills once you have passed those two classes uh, through the assessment process then you can take the expert cohort this is a nine month program where there are quite a few prerequisites if you don't have the prerequisites, you're not going to be able to get the benefit out of the class. So the prerequisites are having a coaching background. I hope now by the end of this video, you're able to see that having a coaching background is pretty essential. You've got to be able to have the basics, at least understanding a professional coach is all about and have that experience to carry out that non-ego, non-expert led approach. The other prerequisite is actually having an organization to work with at an organizational enterprise level, because this program is all about experience. It's about actually being in an organization and being mentored, coached, and guided through an organizational change program. So you will get more skills acquisition, there will be more models, there will be more tools, but the primary focus is for you to be guided and experienced with other people in other organizations who are also going through the same thing and with AWA professionals who have done this many, many times before and do it for a living already. The format is that we take every two weeks, we're running um, coaching calls for the group. We have two individual one-to-one -one coaching sessions throughout the program for people to grow. We have um, a range of different media that you can interact with, learning development program. We've got, we use Slack for uh, uh, talking between calls. You can get help all the way through and you'd also get access to um, explanations, deeper explanations and all of those kind of things go a lot deeper into the tools and all those kind of things. At the end, just before the end of the program is a four day residential, which the next one will be doing in sunny Europe. The idea is to have a, retreat where we are being for four days really going deep into some of this self-development and um, both external and internal again looking deeply with the people that you've been on a cohort with with sort of seven eight months going much deeper into what it means to be an enterprise coach and then at the end of those uh, four days then typically we'll have a few one or two more calls where we can consolidate that and finish off the program 
At that point, you'll be ready with all of the different assets, all of the different things, the case studies, everything you need to become an IC Agile certified expert in the enterprise track. And there's a three hour assessment process that you have to go through. And we will, throughout this program, we will guide you and prepare you and get you ready for that assessment. So this whole program is designed to help you get the right experience and necessary skills to be effective and succeed in organizational change. So the reason why I've put this video together is to primarily to help you understand the role of an enterprise coach. And secondary at the end is just to give you uh, the option or the opportunity to learn on a, on a, um, a, on a program of work which has been designed to accelerate that learning. So there's a lot to an enterprise coach. It will take years typically to become uh, completely confident and completely happy and effective in this space. But this program is designed to accelerate that and get you there quicker. So I have refrained from giving any credentials or any kind of uh, expertise uh, credibility about myself in this video, typically because different cultures ask for different things. So the culture that I come from typically doesn't want to hear about credibility. It wants to get into the knowledge and what's going on first, and then maybe if people are interested, they might ask a bit about you. Other cultures require credibility and knowledge about the speaker before the content. So I've done it this way round because then those who want to watch the content can watch that. And if you're not interested in anything to do with my credentials, then you can pretty much turn the video off now. However, if you are interested and want to know where all this information has come from and how this has been put together, then I'm going to give you a couple of minutes uh, talk around where this has come from and those credentials. So my personal journey started over 20 years ago. I came from a project management and then a software delivery and a coding perspective. I became an architect and an enterprise architect for very large software development. So typically either thousands or tens of thousands of people or multiple millions of people operating through the web. So the architecture background and an enterprise architecture meant that I had to talk to all different departments, including very senior leadership, board of directors of very, very big companies, typically Fortune 500 companies and um, people who, uh, software people don't normally get access to. So I was very fortunate in that perspective of having a very wide organizational scope view around the software and the enterprise um, uh, real estate that has to be put together to run a large corporate. And what I found during that time was that my technical skills, the higher up I got, were less and less required, and it was more about people and the way that people adapt to change. And I learned that coaching actually was more effective than architecting in an ivory tower and then trying to deliver these blueprints to others, hoping that they would code what I had designed. So instead, I took a coaching approach at a large scale. So five and a half years ago, I had been working in organizational change for a number of years. I've been a coach at uh, other agile agencies, um, been a head of consultancy for another agile agency. I had been um, already operating as an independent coach for many years at that organizational um, place. I'd stepped out of IT, working across all the different areas, marketing, IT, legal, finance, and um, I was starting to get a little bit lonely. It was uh, pushing the boundaries of what human beings can do in organizations, and there wasn't really anyone around. I'd kind of looked at the agile communities. Most of the communities at that time were dealing with team-based elements, such as Scrum or Kanban, and there wasn't really anything going on in the world at that global, uh, at that uh, organization level. So, I created Adventures with Agile as a community and AWA became pretty much the fastest growing and largest community for enterprise change on the planet. So since then, many other organizations and, and communities have sprung up in this whole organizational space. But really, we encouraged, for example, Disciplined Agile encouraged less the training from less we brought that to the uk we've looked at um uh, safe model and all these kind of things when they first came out uh, sort of five six years ago this whole kind of need was starting to grow 
And through all that time, I've invited people to the meetups, primarily here in London, but then we run them in New York, in Chicago, in Dallas, we've run them in Europe, we've run them in South Africa, we've run things in Australia, run things all over the world, in different uh, communities, we, we've created relationships all over the world. And um, just recently, uh, which actually a couple of years ago now, we won the um, uh, people who had done the most and been the most promoting of agile space on the planet. Uh, as an award. So um, really have shaped the way, AWA has been a massive shaper of the way that Agile and organizational change has um, been effective and has grown as an industry on this planet. So um, with all of that knowledge, with lots of different speakers, with lots of different opportunities to work with some real founding thought members of, 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 of this space, um, we, I've really grown and AWA has really grown through all these amazing people that we've had through the community. Now, my background has always been in consultancy or independent kind of um, space for a long time. And so it was natural for me to create a consultancy around organizational change. We already had a massive community, already knew so many um, customers and clients. And so I employed people, first of all, as consultants and then as permanent um, staff to start growing out what I considered was the best of the best that we could do from the from from organizational change and there's a whole program of learning that staff need to go through before they can train anything at all with AWA and once people are training once people are learning then all of the information that they get back from the engagements they have with our clients from the training classes they run plus the community experience that we're still experiencing many meetups all over the planet all of that knowledge goes back into the learning, which is continuously upgraded and updated as times change. We've just had a massive, great big change on the planet with C19, and all of our training classes have been upgraded to take things like this into account. So we're always current, we're always learning. So I also got involved with um, creating and helping with disciplined agile. I've also got involved with IC Agile. Now, IC Agile, as I mentioned earlier, are pretty much the premier certificate authority in organizational change, especially where agility is concerned. And I have helped with different tracks to upgrade and contribute, along with many other people from the community, to really create what it, the learning objectives for the different elements of organizational change. For example, coaching, enterprise, leadership, these are key elements that helped upgrade and um, help IC Agile with the learning objectives, along with others in the community. Um, so with all of this experience through clients, community, through certification authorities, setting the bar high has always been a, um, a prerequisite of the work that I have done and that AWA does. We're not a bash them out, sell them cheap company. What we're looking for is results because at that senior level, nothing else matters except getting results. And that has gone all the way through all of our training. The training and the coaching that we do, both the leadership coaching, the team coaching, the organizational coaching, all of those coaching elements are geared around getting results. It's not fluffy stuff for the sake of it, it's fluffy stuff if needed, if that's what gets results. So that's how we're all organized and that's how these programs are put together. And that's my approach into organizational change. So um, along with um, probably lots of other things I could talk about in terms of credibility, I've uh, been a keynote speaker, um, at various different national conferences, um, I've run workshops with hundreds of people um, around leadership, around organizational change. If you Google me on, um, or if you Google AWA or myself, Simon Powers, you'll find lots of different uh, talks and videos that have been out there, I've done InfoQ articles, um, there's a whole wealth of things, including lecturing at universities and um, working in different sectors, such as um, the private sector with um, charities, banking, retail, uh, industrial, looking at the entire stack of the organization, so a vertical stack through hardware, software, marketing, sales, all those different elements. Um, and also from the public sector, working with councils and central governments to uh, really look at how citizens are best served and what that means. So I've done some amazing work in that sector as well, including contributing to winning an award, although that was slightly before AWA. So all of these different elements go together to make a very, very credible and viable approach to organizational change. 
and those have been baked into our training programs, into our coaching programs. And if you engage with anything that we're doing, you'll get all of that experience. And we're also totally happy to share as much detail, the good and the bad stuff, the success and the fail stories, because in this business, there are things that sometimes don't work and that's okay. So what we've done is we always look to learn from those things, build upon them so that we're ever more successful at what we do. And that's kind of the approach. So I hope this has been interesting for you. And I hope that the knowledge in here has been able to give you a better understanding of enterprise, um, enterprise coaching and what it takes to be an enterprise coach and how you might go about becoming an enterprise coach, whether that's from a leadership role, an external role or an internal role as a coach.